everybody. I am hot pinked up today. I have pink flowers with me today. Today is a day to honor many, many women. I have my Loretta Lynn platter that I absolutely love. My platter and it's pink roses. As you can see, pink is obviously my favorite color. I have my embroidery from Betty Sue. Loretta's Daughter's Shop. It has pink and blue on it. I love it. Today is a day we are going to pink out. We are honoring any and everyone who is battling, and we will say, we will declare battling, and please, please pray for the people that I'm going to give you a list. Last week, I, you know, I talked about Larry Russell. I talked about how great he did on the piano when he was here. His precious wife, Pam, was sitting right here. Pam went to be with Jesus last week. She had cancer. It was fast. It was violent. It was brutal. And she has gone to be with the Lord now. She would want to be with the Lord. If she had a choice of where would she want to be, that's where she would want to be. Sadly, um, Larry is laying the love of his life to rest today. I am just still in shock, can't believe it, because she was so precious, and I just see her sitting right here with us. Today we're honoring Pam Russell, the memory of Pam Russell. What a precious, precious lady. We are honoring my sister, Lila Paget, who is in the fight of her life. On the 13th, she goes back to the doctor, and they decide what process to go as the cancer seems to be spreading and, and not in a good way. Um, Selena Hales, you know her, you love her. She's the lead singer for Angel Spirit today. We are gonna feature her music. We're gonna feature a program that Selena was on with me a few months ago. And in the memory of Betty Jordan, we are saluting all women who battled and beat cancer, or some of them, the Lord just called them home. Um, one who beat it, Donna Fine, precious, precious lady, you know, and, and we just look around and, and God is delivering miracles every day. Betty Fister, my sweet, sweet aunt. Hazel Dobbs, my mom, who, who beat it. The doctor said, Hazel, you have six months to live and mama lived two years and two months. So the doctor didn't know. And to Hazel Mosley, who four months from the day we knew that she had cancer, she went to be with Jesus. We never know. We saw... Losing Danny Hensley here at the ETC family was like traumatic for everybody who knew him because he was our go-to guy. He was everything. On Saturday, something was going on and I said, I needed to call Danny. I couldn't. And I'm like, it's so weird to me that so many people have left us. But again, today, please remember the Russell family as they lay Pam to rest. Please pray for my sister. We have the power of prayer, and that is one of the greatest things about doing live television. I can come on here every single day, and I can ask you to help us get through this, and you often do that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, um, Loretta Lynn, <clears throat> I, you know, we, we've had this little argument going for years and years and years because... Brackett decides he's her number one fan. I decide I'm her number one fan. I am Loretta's number one fan. I know the words to almost every song, but I will tell you, I had not been to the many places that he took me to Butcher Holler. I'd never been there. We've been there now. And we went to, um, I think it's Van Leer. We went over there to the post office and I mailed some stuff from that post office. We went all over Eastern Kentucky. We've been to Hurricane Mills numerous times. She was the greatest, in my opinion, the writing that she did. She wrote like 98% of what she sang, but she also lived it. And she lived it, um, she was a simple southern country, wonderful, amazing, amazing lady. And last week, tribute was paid to her, and they did have her funeral at, the, at her farm. But now they're going to have a public funeral, and I don't know when and what and how that's going to be. <clears throat> but I would love to be, I'd, I'd love to be a part of that. I would love to be there. I would love to see people honor her. But would I go and fight the crowds? No. As much as I love her, no, I wouldn't. But in your own way, pay tribute to her. Play her music every time you can think about it. Go back to an old favorite. Go back to one of those songs that just made you feel good. Go back to one of those songs. The song that I love the most that Loretta did was, she didn't write this one, but it's Love is the Foundation. And every time I hear it, I just think about how she and Conway did that song so perfectly together. And it was just, you know, it's just, 
there are certain songs that you will identify with her and um, my favorites, you know, my favorites are those older ones that then her daughters came out and, and did some of the older ones and they said, we really liked Mama's older music. So today, in honor of last night, about 9.15, we hit the 200,000 mark on the special that we produced here. Um, Freddie did the camera work, I did the um, talking and, and doing everything else, and then Hannah Towns put the deal together. And we hit 200,000 last night on YouTube, so if you haven't checked that out, it's a special that we did with Loretta's daughters. And sadly, one of those daughters went to be with the Lord just a few years after we interviewed her. And um, she had a lot of breathing problems. And <clears throat> everybody's been worrying about me because I've got some serious breathing problems. And um, it's not getting any better. It's going on three weeks now, so I'm going to finally get some testing done. And it's a little scary because I think I know what's wrong. I think it's some things I've been around and I hope that's the only problem, but this morning somebody was listening to my chest and said it sounds really, really deep, and I said, yes, it does. So um, it's very, very weird, but I think, I hope, it is only allergies, and um, we're gonna just leave it at that. We're gonna say it's just some stuff that I've been exposed to, and I hope it's all gonna go away. And I hope that one day soon I can breathe clearly because I have not been able to, and, um, yeah, it's been kind of crazy. It's been it's been kind of tough, but I'm still doing it, and I'm still um, I cough a lot, I hack a lot, and I'm trying to get through it. And I just keep hoping that I'm going to get through this pretty quickly. I hope three weeks has been a rough three weeks, but okay. I want to share um, some music of somebody that I love, but I also want to share some good news for bargain hunters. They're going to be two big, huge yard sales this weekend. There's going to be one. This, this benefits Dominic's mission down in Ball Ground, and a lot of people have brought a lot of stuff. And it is going to be on Friday and Saturday at 261 Roy Haynes Drive in Ball Ground. It is just off Old Dawsonville Road near Calvin Farmer Park, 261 Old Dawsonville Road, and it is going to be packed with all kinds of goodies. I have never seen so much stuff. People are bringing it in, bringing it in, bringing it in. There's any and everything you can imagine. So come out and, and help to benefit Dominic's mission. They provide food and um, they, they just give back to the community and that's what they do. So we want to help them. And again, that's gonna be on Friday and Saturday and I believe it starts at 9 a.m. And then there's going to be a huge yard sale. This is an indoor yard sale, so <clears throat> the weather's supposed to be beautiful both these days, but just in case something crazy were to happen, the other yard sale is inside at Hinton at the community building, and this is going to be a multifamily yard sale with tons and tons and tons of stuff. And I can tell you they have every size clothes from here to there to everywhere, and they have tons of baby stuff. They just have tons and tons of stuff. So get out, and if you're in the Hinton community, remember that's going to be on Friday and Saturday. So, um, and I'll get the information, the time frame. I can't remember that, but I'll, I'll find out during a break. So, so don't forget. And uh, if you're looking for bargains, they're going to have everything from plants. They've got so much stuff. It's it's kind of it's it's a bit overwhelming. So there's going to be a whole lot of stuff. And if you want to get out. And you're trying to avoid the traffic that is in LJ, and we're going to talk a little bit about the traffic in LJ. I know a lot of people, a lot of locals say we're not going to town because of the Apple Festival. I understand, I get it, because I was in that traffic on Saturday. Um, but please remember that every dime raised at the Apple Festival benefits your community. It helps somebody who cannot help themselves, and that's the cool thing about it. The Lions put out tireless effort to make this happen. Chamber of Commerce is a big part of it. It is a big to-do in LJ, and I know it's a little irritating. I was in the traffic, I remember. But at the same time, it is giving back and giving back and giving back to your community, and that's what's so important. So, okay, today we are honoring my friend Selena Hales. We are honoring um, her next journey. Her next journey is more, more medical things to happen possibly a trip to MD Anderson, possibly a trip to Sloan Kettering in New York, possibly she's in a trial program, we hope. We hope that things are gonna progress and we're gonna see a miracle. 
And I'm going to ask you to pray as hard as you've ever prayed that Selena gets to take that turn and that she is one of those miracles that later we say, can you believe you beat that cancer? And that, those are the words we want to hear. So please, when you pray, you pray specifically for her to um, accept whatever new drugs they're going to be giving her, whatever they can do to, to help her <clears throat> and to keep her here for those grandbabies and, um, and to be here for all of us. I can't think of a time in my life that I wasn't calling Selena and saying, could you sing at my grandmother's funeral? Could you sing at my mama's funeral? Can you sing at my husband's funeral? Can you sing at my daughter's funeral? I never, she never said no, and she was always there, and um, she was there for a lot of people. So um, I think it's important that we be there for her, and the only way I know that we can all be there together is to join together in prayer. And so please, every time you pray, please pray for Selena, pray for Rick, pray for the babies, pray for all of them to help her get through this next phase of where she's headed. And um, we don't know. We don't know what the choice will be. The doctors will evaluate, and then they'll decide, and then we'll keep you updated. So, all right, we are honoring every single person who ever fought cancer, every single person who ever battled cancer, every single person who ever beat cancer. There are so many of you. There's one lady right here in LJ who beat it, I think it, we're going on 30 years now. And Joe, you are an amazing, amazing, strong person. And um, she had colon cancer, the same kind of cancer my husband had, but she beat it. She beat it when people weren't beating it. And that's the really good thing about medical technology. They're coming up with newer and better things every single day. And there's some kids sitting here in the fifth grade in, in Gilmer County in school who may be that person who solves the cancer mystery. There's somebody out there who's going to do this. And we know it's getting better. The medical field is getting better with this. So today we're also going to be honoring all of you who came out to the Apple Festival and you stood the traffic and you stood the crowds and you stood in line for a long time to get something to eat. I saw y'all standing in line. And then you came in and you enjoyed a concert. And I have just a few things from the concert that we're going to share with y'all because Tim has the good stuff and he's going to edit it. What I have, I did on my iPad, but we're going to do a couple of things because I want to say thank you to our viewers who did come out that day. And uh, thank you for caring about what we do and thank you for saying, hey, we watch every day. One lady said, I watch three times a day. And I said, that's really, really cool. So, so thank you all. And, and thank you for saying that this is what you like. That's, that's what you like and that's what you enjoy. We're also going to share a little bit of the heart of the home that was actually done in honor and in memory of my dear friend, Fred Wyndham, who went to be with the Lord over the Christmas holidays last year. He sadly um, left me and left me in tears because I was like, what will I do? How will I ever do this again? How will I do this without him? We found a way, so we're doing it. So Heart of the Home is going to be back, and we're going to be producing some programs. Not nearly as many as Fred and I did because I just don't have the time right now, but we are going to be doing some, and it's going to be fun. And we're going to be sharing that with you all here on ETC. So... Please, please mark your calendar. The Isaacs are going to be in town. They're going to be in Canton, Georgia, November the 13th. That's only four weeks away, guys. November the 13th at 4 p.m., there will be the Isaacs, John Bowman, and Glory Bound, and then a bunch of other folks are going to be there. Uh, Linda Autry, who is the best piano player anywhere in the world. She is amazing. She's going to be there as a special guest this is the White Christmas Concert, and all the money raised that day goes to provide Christmas for children in Cherokee County who have nothing, and uh, not through any fault of their own. It's children in the foster system, and it's, it's one of those things that these kids literally would not have Christmas if Bob and Linda Reese had not stepped up over 36 years ago to do this. And so remember, and this is going to be at the First Baptist Church in Canton, and again, it's at 4 o'clock on November the 13th, and I sure hope to see a lot of our viewers there that day. It's inside, it's got great parking, great place to go, and if you come early, you can come to Ball Ground and come down and visit. So, so I hope you will make plans again. It's November the 13th, and we know that the Isaacs are number one, and they are the best. So um, I hope that you will join Bob and Linda and everybody else there, and I hope that you will bring your heart and bring your wallet and help these kids in Cherokee County. All right, guys, we're going to go to um, a special song by Angel Spirit. 
I don't know any other way to start this program than to see these beautiful ladies and um, what they meant to me. On, on, you know, every time I'd call them, I'd say, can y'all do a TV show? Can you do this? Can you do that? Yeah, they always said yes. They never said no. And that's what I loved because their spirit was truly an angelic spirit and um, the name is perfect. So I want you to sit back now and, and say a little prayer for Selena as she leads the group and um, just sit back and, and reflect on what it was like to get to go to those concerts. Diane's already gone to be with the Lord and we hope that Selena is going to beat this cancer. And um, again, I'm wearing pink today in honor of each and every one of you. I'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Okay, all right, y'all. You heard sweet Selena, and you heard Mildred, and you heard Diane. You won't be hearing Diane anymore unless you go to be with Jesus and you hear Diane singing up in the angel choir. Um, it's so weird to see that Angel Spirit is not able to perform anymore. We absolutely loved having those girls in concert, and I can remember the first time we brought them to television, and Fred was just, wow. He said, they are fantastic. They are awesome. Today, please say a prayer for Selena. Now, I chose something I want to share with y'all, and this is, um, this is when Selena came to visit with me a few months ago. She was looking healthy. She was happy. Everything was good. She is still staying so positive, stay, so focused, so wanting to recover from cancer, and we need to join together, and we need to pray for her, but I want y'all to see her as she battled the cancer. So we're going to do about five minutes of a program with her. Then we're going to come back and we're going to share some special things from the Apple Festival with you. So I just think it's important as we go through October, it is always breast cancer awareness. It's always pink out. Everybody's wearing pink socks. Everybody's wearing pink bows in their hair. Everybody's wearing pink everything. And I just think about what we can do for each other because there is, um, there's one man who's going to make the decision on everything that we face in our lives. And um, if we pray hard enough, maybe he will hear our prayers. So, and again, please don't forget my sister Lila. <clears throat> and today the family of Pam Russell, as they lay her to rest, I still cannot believe. I mean, I just, I see her sitting right over here. It was very, very strange. 
but there are so many women who fought a hard, hard battle and didn't make it. Um, and then there are others who fought, and they are still here. And Joe, you're a, you're an inspiration to so many. Okay, here we go. We're going to visit with Selena as she came to the set here at ETC a few months ago. Like this, <laughs> but you have not stopped loving life, living life, and enjoying every single moment. The first two weeks after treatment started in, on January the 24th um, was horrible. Mm -hmm. The whole two week interval, my treatments are every two weeks. Um, and the opposite week of a treatment, I still go in and get blood work done. So every Monday I have to see, a, have to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. But the first two weeks was really, really bad. It was everything they promised me it would be and then some. Mm -hmm. But after that, my pain changed. And I didn't really know at the time if it was because the chemo was working so quickly or if it was the medication, they had me on some really strong medicine, 30 mm -hmm. milligrams of morphine twice a day, wow. every 12 hours, and, and I took it as as, yeah. need, you know, yeah. as it was ordered, and they actually gave me hydrocodone for breakthrough pain. And uh, in the beginning, I needed that too. I was yeah. in terrible pain. I, I was with you a couple of times when you could see the pain oh. in your face, but today, you no, just look, I'm great. it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. After the first 30 days of medication, she decreased my dosages to half that. And at some point I said to Rick, you know, I feel so good, I just don't think I need this medicine. And um, I said, so the only way to know it is to skip it one day mm -hmm, and just mm -hmm. see how I do. So February the 26th, I went to a singing in Canton or Woodstock area for the Joy Masters mm -hmm. Memorial for Jerry mm -hmm. Forrester. And um, that was a very spiritually motivated event. And that night I took my medicine when I got home and the following morning on Sunday I didn't take it and I haven't had another pain pill. Wow. I'm in zero I'm getting, pain. Oh, my God. God is so good to me. I'm telling you, between the prayers and the treatment and the you know, the chemo and the, the supplements and things that I'm doing, God's got me right there mm -hmm. beyond a shadow of a doubt. And uh, I'm just blessed. Mm -hmm. I cannot say enough. Well, and, and we have had conversations that God's plan is perfect. And... I just, you know, that time of year when you lose a child and then this starts happening to you and I just felt like I had to step in and I had to be there, whatever I could do, you yeah. know. And, and I said it was so weird because you're young and you're healthy and you're, and you just think, how did this happen to her? And we talked about this a little bit before we went live. You really didn't have any side effects that it would have said, no you symptoms. need to go get a scan. Mm -hmm. no, no, I actually had gone to my doctors, my cardiologist, the, the female doctor, the, the primary care, everybody at the 1st of December. Mm -hmm. And my liver enzymes were great. Uh, everything was normal, a clean bill of health going into the new That's year. Crazy. But I had started having some abdominal pain and I was just trying to get it figured out. And then yeah. I had COVID again during the Christmas holidays. So I scheduled my doctor's appointment with my primary care after my five days of quarantine had, had expired and so when I got there that day she addressed everything and like I said a minute ago we went through all the hoops and I ended up in the ER but mm -hmm. to be you know fine in December blood work wise and then in January be told you have stage four, four. you know you, yeah. know, you really thought you think of pancreatic cancer and the liver as a death sentence mm -hmm. and it was at one time oh yeah yeah um, but it's not the case so much anymore mm -mm. and mm -mm. I'm thankful for that and I really believe in my heart that God's got this and I'm not going to, you know, it may come back and get me at a later date, yeah. but I really think I'm going to beat it. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Yay. And we're encouraged by I'm that. I'm a winner either way. Yes. But yes. Yes. And we have a song we want to do because without his amazing grace, you know, I know, I wouldn't be here. Um, there are times in our life that we just think this is the end of our life. This is all we have and our expiration date is coming. And then this miracle occurs. Yeah. And, and today somebody was talking about angels. And I said, I really feel angels around me. Yes. And um, today is a birthday. Um, it's Don's father's birthday. And, and even though at times he could be a little tough, Difficult. a little tough, yeah. <laughs> she said, Mama, in all my whole life, as his child, as your child, all he had to say about you was to praise you and to and to love you and to 
honor you. And I thought, isn't that weird? Because I never knew that about him. And she said, all my life, my father never said anything negative about you. And she said, it hurts me to think that you are ever not precious to someone. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's so weird because he never said things like right, that. Right. And for her to remember that as a child, and it really blessed me. Yes. So we are blessed. Yes. We are blessed. And sometimes it comes in a weird way because she was squalling her eyes out this morning and having a hard day. And then she said, Mom, I just wanted to tell you, you know, you are you are loved and you are blessed and and sometimes we forget that that we're mm -hmm. special and and we're we're his. Well, you are special, Sherry. You have always, always supported us as Angel Spirit. I mean, you gave me our, you gave us our name, Yay! essentially. You and Charlene. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, it was just a, a, a memorable day, and you've been a part of my life even and, before and Angel without, Spirit. And without Fred Wyndham, we would never have gone anywhere. No. He took you to television everywhere, and people just loved it. So we to, us, to our we, Angel Fred, who's watching yes, us. Yes, yes, yeah, he's, he's an amazing man. Us. Here we go. We're going to enjoy a song, uh, Amazing Grace, and then we're going to come back, do a commercial break, and then we're going to we're going to share a mini Angel Spirit concert with y'all okay. because I'll tell you a little secret. This started because I was coming up the road and I was listening to Tammy Wynette yesterday. <laughs> and I was getting angry. And it was Stand By Your Man, huh? And then it was Divorce, huh? And then it was Apartment Number Nine. And then it was Woman to Woman. And I thought, oh, that one's a good one. And then I called her and I said, hey, we got to do a show about the music sets the tone and we're going to go to gospel music. So, so we're going to go to gospel music. But I laughed and I said, you know, just like Fred naming this project that he did, we'll have a good time. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to do mm -hmm. every he single did. day. And as we're coming up the road this morning and I'm laughing and talking to different people and can't remember who I'm talking to and which phone. And, and it's just, we got to have a good time in this you life. Do. Life is yeah. too short. Yep, absolutely. Well, short. here we go. Amazing Grace. We're inside High Shoals Baptist Church now. I'm on top of Amicalola Falls. This is in memory of Clarence Stanley who made the church, who made this church because of his love for his church family and his Savior. How cool is this? <clears throat> and again, here's a view out the window. And I don't know where the lights are. Is it? I don't know if it has lights. It's kind of dark in here today because it's a gloomy day. But it's a beautiful day to visit. Look at these handmade pews. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. How awesome is this? And everybody has their little cushions. That is so sweet. That is so sweet. You can tell that these are handmade cushions by church members who know that these pews are hard to sit on. Okay, guys, I have to explain that. I did two different clips at High Shoals Church, and I want y'all to go. This is the time of year that you go to Amicalola Falls. Don't just go to the falls. Go around to the top of the falls, and then you go a couple of miles down a dirt road. There are signs that tell you how to do it. This is High Shoals Church, back in the back of Amicalola Falls. It is open constantly. The door is always open. You can go in there to pray. You can go in there to sing. You can go in there to read the Bible. You can go in there and just sit and reflect. It is the most amazing little church. It does not have electricity, but it does have gas heat. So on cold days, they still do have church because it has gas heat. But that is the coolest daycation trip you can ever make. And if you're battling, if you're fighting, if there's something that's going on in your life that is just hurting, go to the top of Amicalola Falls and just go back to this little church and reflect. They have a little cemetery there. Some local folks from here in Gilmer County were part of the process in building that church many, many years ago. And um, it still does not have electricity. But um, it is so strange to go there. The day that we went, it was a dreary, gloomy, rainy, misty, cold day. But it was absolutely, it was beautiful. It was just beautiful. It was so peaceful. It was so cool. And one of my favorite things was to see all the different cushions that the old ladies put on their seats. And you could tell that so-and-so had a certain seat where they sat, and so-and-so had a certain seat where they sat. 
you know, pick up the phone today and call each and every one of your church families and say, will you please put Selena Hales on your church prayer list? Will you please put Lila Paget on your church prayer list? Will you please put the Russell family on your church prayer list? Because today, I, I just I have this really weird feeling of what it's like for Larry because I've been there. I was a young widow, and I remember what it was like when the doctor said, Mr. Martin, go home and get your affairs in order and make peace with your family. Do whatever you need to do to get ready. Your time is near. I remember those words so clearly. And um, Pam didn't get those words. They didn't know how bad her cancer was. They didn't know how fast it was going to take her. In just a matter of days, she was gone. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And uh, I think it's important that we look now and we just find peace in whatever we are doing in this life. So now we're going to take a commercial break. And when we come back, a little bit more music from Angel Spirit. And then you're going to have a mini Dwight Sanford Mr. LJ concert from the Apple Festival. So we're going to share a little bit of that with you when we come back. you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. Combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000 or go online to georgiamtc.com. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. Okay, we are back, and we're going to set up now with some Angel Spirit music, and nobody likes Angel Spirit any more than Jen did. Jen loved doing live shows with them. Jen is having a scan, and we'll get a report from the doctor next week, so let's hope and let's add her to all the prayer list, and let's say it is going to be a positive scan with nothing but great results, and let's stay focused and let's stay positive because... Um, so many people we know are battling cancer. So many people we know are getting that bad news, you know. 
everybody's always projecting, what did you have done? What happened? What, you know, I didn't discuss anything that was going on with me, even though there were several surgeries involved. Everybody just knew I went in for surgery. There was some pretty crazy stuff going on, but it was all addressed and it was all handled. And I hope that nothing comes back and I hope we have no more problems. I just decided it was time to take care of me. And that's something that we often forget. We're taking care of everybody else and we forget to take care of ourselves. So if you're not feeling well, go to the doctor, get a checkup. If things are going crazy and you feel like something's just wrong, get your labs done because we don't know what is sneaking and hiding around the corner. And I think when they found Jen's, hers was like this rare something because she was feeling fine and looking good and everything was great. And then all of a sudden you get this news. So that nasty, nasty stuff that starts with a C has a hiding place and we want to get it out of hiding and take care of it and get rid of it. Y'all don't forget these yard sales that I told you about. One of them again is at 261 Roy Haynes Drive in Ball Ground and it is going to be a big fundraiser for Dominic's mission Dominic's a great, great guy who does so much for the community and gives back, gives back, gives back. I can't tell you many thousands and thousands of meals he has given away. He is an amazing, amazing man. So don't forget that one is on Friday and Saturday. And then the one at Hinton at the community building, that's going to be a multifamily, all kinds of stuff. You cannot even imagine a lot of stuff, new clothes with tags still on it. A lot of cool, cool stuff and uh, come out and, and make a purchase and um, do something to save yourself some money. Anytime you can save yourself some money, so you're doing something good. All right, we're going to go to some angel spirit music. And when we finish with that, then you're going to get to pretend you're at the Apple Festival and you're going to get to pretend that you didn't have to fight the traffic because you're going to get a little bit of what Dwight Sanford delivered on the stage on Saturday. Here we go. For those of you who don't know us that well, that was our first opportunity to be in a studio, and we really had a good time. Um, it was a unique experience, and one I hope we get to do again sometime. And thank you all for all your support. You've been so good to us. Thank you. You ready? Now we're ready.
Wow, that was such an amazing night. That night was called We'll Have a Good Time. And it was honoring our friend Hans Rufert, who was in the battle of his life as he fought cancer. He was given less than 10% chance of survival. He has been here 15 years. We know that miracles happen every single day. And we're going to ask you to continue to pray for miracles for my sister, for my friend Selena, and for any and everybody else who is out there battling cancer. Please um, get yourself on a prayer list and, and know that, that God can turn it around. And, and that's what we we're praying for with Selena. Now, this is what you folks sitting down in Hickory Flat, you folks sitting down in Holly Springs, you folks that came up to the Apple Festival, you said, I love when Dwight sings. Well, you're going to get to hear a little bit of his singing. Now, you got to remember, this isn't professionally done. It was done with my iPad. But it was pretty awesome. You will hear a little bit of foot traffic as people walked in front of him and whatever. But we had a really, really good time and a really good turnout. Over 30,000 people came to LJ that day. And again, when you get angry and you get ill about the traffic, just think about all the money that's raised that stays right here in Gilmer County. That is so very, very important. It is giving back and doing for others. And that's what the whole event is about. So it is also bringing recognition to those amazing apples that are grown right here in LJ, Georgia. So, all right, guys, let's go to a song by Dwight Sanford. I don't know which one's first. I know which one I like the most, but we'll see what comes up first. Here we go. And good morning out there in Nelson, Georgia, to Miss Juanita. Thank you for coming up and telling us how much you enjoy the show. 
You know, um, this is what I love to do. This is one of those reasons I get up every single morning and I say, okay, it's time to head to LJ. There's just something about the atmosphere, the fun, the opportunity to come live to you and to share good news or often to share sad news. And today I want to remind y'all about the loss of Pam Russell. That was just, it was shocking. It was so, it was so scary. It was so fast. And um, they are laying her to rest today up in McKaysville. So please say a prayer for Larry and, um, and know that um, hopefully when he is ready, we will have him back. It's so strange because we were planning on bringing him back to play this amazing piano. And then he loses Pam. So he's going to have a lot to deal with. So please pray for him. Okay, let's go back to another one by Mr. Ella J.
Yay, that was so much fun. Now, we're going to end today with the song that was planned for the ending of Saturday. But somehow there was a little glitch in the timing, and uh, we had to end a few minutes early, which was kind of weird because he had this set up to end honoring his daddy, who actually went to war on October the 8th, the very day that he was standing on that stage. Right here in LJ, Georgia, his daddy walked to the train station in 1943 with his brother Emmett, and it was actually Emmett's birthday. And Emmett would be 92 years old in heaven, I guess, heavenly birthday, yeah. So um, we wanted to end that program, and the timing didn't work out right. So today, in honor of his dad, who went to war October the 8th, 1943, and thankfully came back to finish raising his family here in Gilmer County and to Emmett, who um, just celebrated his birthday in heaven. So that is really, really cool. They walked together from Pumpkin Center here in Gilmer County. They walked to the train station. Now, y'all imagine that today, that your young son is leaving a community out on 282, and he's going to walk to war. Here we go. All right, let's go. <laughs> Okay, it was on this day in 1943 that my daddy left here to go to World War II. My uncle Emmett, his brother, walked with him from Pumpkin Center all the way downtown to watch him get on that train over at the depot and leave here for war. Emmett said he was scared to death he'd never come back home. Emmett said it was raining that evening he said he cried when daddy left out on the train. And then later on after that, I wrote a little song about it. It's called Baby Blue.
Okay, I'll just tell it. That is, out of all the songs that Dwight Sanford has written, that's his favorite. So I hope y'all liked it. And it does honor his dad. And uh, I think it honors somebody else, too. So uh, he likes to write songs about things that are familiar to him. And he has got a ton of songs written that he hasn't recorded yet. And I keep saying, maybe y'all record that one. Maybe y'all record that one. Maybe y'all record that one. If you have a talent, you need to be writing. Look at what Loretta Lynn did in her lifetime. She sat as a mom up in... Washington State, sitting there on the ground with her guitar, and she wrote. And her first song she wrote herself, Honky Tonk Girl, and then the rest is history. I cannot imagine my life without the music of Loretta Lynn. I cannot imagine if that woman had not picked up a guitar and not written about Doolittle and some of the craziness and all, all the shenanigans that went on. Her music was the music that my life was tuned into, whether it be radio or in my car, eight tracks or the old LP albums. There was something about the music of Loretta Lynn that got me through some tough, tough days and sometimes made me a little sassy and sometimes made me a little crazy. And then the one song <clears throat> that she didn't write, but Tammy Wynette did, Your Good Girl's Gonna Go Bad. That's one of those songs that all us women remember that. There were women in the gospel music industry, in the country music industry, in the rock and roll industry that set a pattern for the way we felt about our days. And so today, I'm going to challenge you, put on a really good Loretta Lynn song and just listen to every single word and choose one that she has written and know that she not only wrote it, she lived it. And we are able to share that because of her. And check out our YouTube. Again, we are celebrating 200,000 hits yesterday on the special that we produced here with ETC for Loretta Lynn. It's called The Coal Miner's Daughter Daughters because she had two beautiful daughters and one of them went into the music industry. And then she had two more daughters who went into the music industry. So she ended up with three daughters in the music industry. It's because she was that mom who sat around and sang to those babies, so don't forget that. We're going to leave you now where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet. I'll see you again tomorrow when some folks from Pickens County are going to be with us. And then on Thursday, guess who's going to be here Thursday? It's Mr. Ella J Day. I'll see you again soon, only on ETC.